Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Keith here hanging out, Jesse on the camera. And on the bench today, we have this poor little victim that we're gonna have to put some life back into. Uh, we bought this actually off one of our friends, one of our followers to the channel. Uh, he built this kind of along the terms of our VS410 chassis transmission with the tier four axles, except for he missed the most important part of having the locking axles or else there's no point in doing it you might as well just buy an ultra if you're just going to do it with the portal so there's no upgrade to actually having the tier for axles without the locking discs so we're going to go through this truck we're going to give it a full rebuild it's all dirty it's greasy it's been sitting for a while apparently it was upside down in the box because it's not greasy on the bottom but just greasy on top everywhere so i feel it was upside down and the shocks had leaked out all over or something. So we're going to add the cables for the rear locking diffs. We're going to get it on par with our other truck. And uh, we're going to get rid of these uh, G-Mate shocks. We'll go back to the tier for shocks. They work great. Um, yeah, anyway, enough about that. I'm going to start ripping this guy apart. Okay, guys, you want to go through all your gear train, top to bottom, front to back, check all the bearings, all that good stuff. We're going to open up these portal boxes we've already done the other side. And then I decided, hey, Maybe we'll cut you guys in on this deal and film it for you, so. Okay, so obviously pull out all the screws. You wanna pull this out, check this out in here. You're gonna see all this grit and stuff in there. It might not look like sand and dirt. It definitely is sand and dirt, so. Uh, for right now, what I'm doing is just stripping the truck down. We're gonna go through, get it all apart, and then clean everything, and then rebuild everything all in one shot. So I've got a couple bags over here. Bag everything up, you guys. Don't just put it in a bin. There we go. Throw boom, everything in there, guys. We'll come back. We'll do it that later. These brass weights, we're not going to use, but we'll just keep around for right now. They're a little aggressive, so we're going to want to continue that. We're going to pull the axles off. We're going to open the axles up, and then we'll catch you guys back here once we have everything laid out. Okay, so now that we got this piece of crap opened up, we found out that uh, the T-lock was actually removed plus the cable and the hole was never plugged or anything uh, when this um, truck was built incorrectly. So we need to uh, now go get some parts. So stay tuned, we're gonna get this all clean, we're gonna get some parts, we'll come back. We might actually just go buy another truck and throw this in the garbage. So uh, we're gonna start another build. We'll see you guys uh, back here later, bye. Hey okay, guys, welcome back. Okay, so uh, a lot happened since uh, the last uh, few seconds in the video. Um, I don't like buying used uh, vehicles. Uh, this vehicle, uh, when we bought it, was supposed to be a little bit more on the lines of where it sits now. Uh, a little bit cleaner. It's supposed to have the cables for the locking differentials installed. Um, the proper link kit in the bottom, all that stuff. Uh, we got the Z-Link bend in the front. We'll put some up close pictures in there. Uh, we use the Traxxas uh, link. You can't bend the uh, stainless at the same radius. Doesn't matter if you heat it or not, it'll crack. Uh, so we use the Traxxas link to make that Z-Bend to get that in there to clear the motor nicely in there, right? So uh, anyhow, we got everything in. A uh, bunch of changes, guys. We had to throw a new servo in it. Uh, for what we paid for the truck, it should have kind of been sitting in this format. Uh, you will notice the sliders on the side have been changed out to the Phoenix sliders with the Phoenix bumpers. Obviously, while we're in there, we might as well spend a couple hundred dollars more and buy the Phoenix body. So we bought the Phoenix body for it. That's pretty cool looking little setup. We kind of just props in there like that. Look good. I do need to get the front inner fenders so we can put uh, the front kind of hinge on because the body will then hinge open. I believe that's the idea with this front hinge mount here. Uh, we don't have a Phoenix yet. Uh, we didn't want to get another uh, portal truck as we have 10 or something like that. And now that they came out the Phoenix straight axle, we're gonna grab that one uh, very soon. In the meantime, we also picked up this Incision uh, Series 2 LED light kit for that body there, the Phoenix. Uh, we got this for friends over at Eliminator RC, along with all the other parts for the truck. And uh, Ryan is also a uh, good source if you have any questions about doing this, or you can hit us up. But it's pretty simple. Uh, this is the second one we've done on here, guys. So if you do need to see some more of the technical stuff, you can just bob back into the first video, uh, VS410XR100, or whatever we called it there. Just it, It's in there, take a look for it. Uh, pretty cool, come along nicely. Uh, right now, um, we got some brass, toss one of those weights there, Jess, if you don't mind. Woo! We got these brass hot racing weights that came with the truck. 
Usually I don't care to use these outside weights, but they're not overly that huge. They just got this goofy thing on the outside. We're gonna throw these in the lathe. I'm gonna cut that off and make that smooth. And I might just kind of round the edge of it in, clean it up a little bit. I might just run the whole thing in the lathe. Just you know, clean it up just a little bit. Um, the fronts, we're gonna strip down a little bit. The back, we're gonna knock down quite a bit. I only want a little bit of extra weight in the back and I want a little bit obviously more in the front. I don't want these balanced uh, the same 58 grams or whatever all four corners. So we'll cut them down as much as we can. Uh, for right now, um, we're working on doing the T-lock servo mount. I basically took the mount, which is in line. This guy used to be whoop, over here and I just cut them off nicely with my saw. I uh, used a razor saw so I can maintain keeping the screw hole in the top and the one mount hole in the bottom. Um, I glued it together with uh, CA glue. I cleaned it first with our uh, MooClean uh, from CalRC Racing Products, uh, MooClean Industrial Grade Cleaner. It's for electrical cleaner, degreaser, for all types of great stuff. Um, you can use it on electric switches, motors, uh, this stuff, get all the alcohol off. Clean it a couple times, wipe it down. Glue it with CA glue, and then we like to put a little bit of um, shoe goo just in there, it gives a little bit of isolation. You know, if it's gonna crack, the shoe will still hold it together. We'll find out it's wiggling, it's cracked, we can fix it. It's not gonna become an issue out on the trail. So this guy here is gonna mount right there on that screw hole. And then for the back side here, we're actually just gonna take some of oh, that roll of double-sided tape. We have some thicker double-sided tape. We're just gonna put a little strip underneath the servos and they can sit right down on there. The one screw in the front is gonna be enough to hold it in. Um, we're using one screw on the other one. It holds in fine. Uh, this just opens and closes the little servo arm or the little cable here. So nothing to it, very simple. That's your lock for the front and rear. Um, so yeah, basically we've ended up now building a Phoenix with uh, tier four axles underneath it. Um, Inner fender's gotta come. Uh, we went with the Reefs RC triple four servo. You guys know we like our Reefs RC servos. Uh, we do want to start getting into the NSD RC servos, the non superior design RC uh, servos. They're making some really nice stuff. Uh, Mike Superior and his company over there are doing fantastic stuff. So we actually want to start getting a couple of those and throwing them into our builds. Um, we already know. Uh, they were right on point with the Reefs RC. They could be better. I'm not going to say anything. I need to check them out first. So we're going to start getting those for some future builds. Uh, tomorrow, I need to go spend yet more money on the truck. We're going to pick up a uh, Reefs low profile, I think the 299 uh, servo mounted on here. And we're going to run it off the front. Nice hook on there. Get that done. Uh, five channel receiver to go in the back. This truck did come with the Traxxas stock receiver. I think it's a four channel Traxxas receiver, which is fine. But uh, we're gonna throw that out. We put a Spectrum in there, um, five channel, so we can run individual for our locks. So channel one, channel two, steering channel three, ESE channel four, and winch channel five. Um, yeah, Jesse, anything? Oh, the shocks. We went back to the Star uh, T-Rex 4 ones. Actually, I'm gonna mod these mounts. And if you guys see our other video, uh, you have to cut open the inside of the mount just a little bit. You can see these guys are nice and clear, but this guy back here never got cut, so he's actually bound up in there. You can see the top's not moving or nothing, so that's something you need to watch for. You literally just need to just chamfer the insides right here a little bit, and they'll clear. Uh, very simple, the T-Rex 4 shock on there. Now we did limit these shocks down to 80 millimeters. Um, we used a piece of fuel tubing. Must have cleaned that up already. <laughs> we used a piece of uh, nitro fuel line. Uh, we cut 10 millimeter piece. What I like to do, it's hard to measure them out when I cut them. I'll cut like five or six, and then I'll measure out four that are like the same length. And if I don't have four, I'll cut some more. And then, you know, I'll try to measure them and cut them, but it's just best to get them all the same, you know, because one millimeter difference is gonna throw your truck off a lot, you guys. So make sure you have your shocks all the same. Build them all, line them up. You can even put a pin through the top and bottom, make sure the pin is not going like this. You know, they're straight, they're perfect. Put them in, you're good to go. Uh, we limit them down 10 mils. So we do have the Vanquish 80 millimeter or Vanquish Incision 80 millimeter shocks, but with the size of the pumpkin in the front and with the upper cross uh, or uh, upper panard in the front, you kind of run out of collapsing in the front before you run out of shock. And we still have about five millimeters, six millimeters of shaft on the side, which would give us room for articulation. Uh, now you guys know uh, my personal style is I don't like a crazy amount of articulation. Um, 
This truck with 80 mils on it is going to be pretty good. It's a little bit longer of a body, so you do lose some articulation by doing the mod. But back um, a couple years ago, I used to limit the shock shaft on the outside and the inside anyway, so you're kind of doing the same thing. Uh, we're still going to get enough articulation out of the truck to get the job done. There's more than enough. There's more than enough built in here. Like that's still a great amount. It's not like it's handicapped or anything. So yeah. Okay, so that is pretty much where we are at with the build right now. Uh, we do have more parts coming on order. We got wheels, we got tires. Uh, we're gonna go with the flat iron XL. They're gonna look dope on this build. Uh, we're gonna get some Vanquish wheels with the new VFR interchangeable colorful bead lock things. I think they're VFR, correct me if I'm wrong in the comments. Probably, probably. Yeah. But uh, yeah, from there guys, uh, stay tuned. We're gonna come back with another update. We're gonna get that body cracking next. I'm not sure if we're gonna leave it fancy or if we're gonna do it rusty and beat up. Uh, we're gonna get this video up on Saturday. It's probably gonna be under construction by then. So um, stay tuned for next week. Find out where we end up on the body guys. Um, I'm not, these little side windows, I have never been feeling these on here. It makes the damn thing look like a subway car. So I think I'm gonna paint these windows out with the body and just do the corner windows like the truck has. Because to me, this just is too much. I, I, I like, love the body, but just this whole one inch right here could have just been gone with and it would have been a nice setup. I understand why they did it, you know, kind of proportion it out and such, but the front end's a little bit shorter than it should be. And the cab's too long. So if they would have put a little bit longer of a nose and short of a box on it look perfect. I understand that you're trying to avoid making it look like an FJ and having to pay licensing and all that stuff on it. They want it to be their own, but at the same time, it's gotta look good, right? So it looks good enough for, for now. Um, yeah, so wheels, tires, um, I gotta program the ESC. Uh, we gotta put a battery tray in it. The battery tray is all chopped up funny and such. I'm gonna order a new one, get that in there. Uh, the shift servos, you guys, uh, those are obviously cached and missing. So we went with the uh, Power HD TR4 waterproof servo. It's a Metal Gear servo, and they're also an HV servo uh, at 7.4 volts. These guys will run um, 36 ounce inch of torque. So nothing crazy, but they are a Metal Gear versus the stock or plastic gears. And these guys break if you sneeze at them the wrong way, so whatever. We're going to be running these uh, going forward on our TRX 4s when we do have to replace them because these are also $32 Canadian, so probably like 20 bucks US to replace those uh, versus the $45 for the Traxxas one. Nothing wrong with the Traxxas one, but they are pricey. Um, Jesse, what else? What are we missing for this cupcake update? Inner front fenders, we gotta get the inner front fenders because we can't mount the body properly. And these uh, light kit has um, rock lights for the inner front fender wells, pretty cool. Nice little setup. Uh, we'll open this up on the next video guys when we do the body, we'll get into that. That's a pretty cool setup. It's got these cool, uh, super bright LEDs for the front with actually little cooling fins on the back. So I'm curious to see how bright these front headlights get on it. So, um, yeah, I think that's pretty much it right now. I got a little bit more uh, stuff to do. I'm um, sorry guys, we didn't film getting to this point, but you can go back and see the one that we did build, uh, very thorough on that one. Um, when I'm working on something that's used and it's just, I shouldn't buy used things, it doesn't matter. I just, I'll always find fault and complain. So there was more cursing than YouTube allows uh, for us to put on there without being demonetized. So there's no point in filming the first half of this. So uh, we're gonna film the back end of this. We'll get this guy out on the trail. Uh, we got a couple months up here for good trailing weather now that it's finally not crazy bug season and crazy hot and stuff like that. So we're gonna get out, get a lot of trailing in. We'll see you guys back next week with the completion of this rig and some trail footage. See you in the next one. Jesse, say goodbye. Jesse. Bye. Bye.